everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I've come to do a Top 5 Wednesday, but this month it is kind of like Top 5 Wednesday Rewind, so you can go back and do any topics that you have missed before, or if, because like I only started less than a year ago, so anything that I haven't done. Um, so today I chose Top 5, the books I'd want to reread. Um, I'm a big rereader, um, so this is actually a possible yeah, I might actually do this, um, but I just, some of them are definitely outside of what I normally read, and I just thought they definitely deserve to be talked about here on booktube, so I would kind of bring them to light. And these aren't in any particular order, I don't want to reread more one more than the other, I just would love to reread all of these. So the first one I'd want to reread, I think I've actually mentioned it on another video. Um, it is called Fortress Dracon Draconis by Michael A. Stackpole. It's kind of the second book in the series. The first one is called The Dark Glory War, War, but that's kind of more of a prequel. So this is like the actual first book for the time period that the rest of the three book, two books take place in, um, where the first one is kind of like setting what's going on in the world now. It is a fantasy. I honestly don't remember much about it. I, when I read it, I was really bad and I only read the chapters that focused on the characters I liked. So I, I there's very little I remember. I just know that it's an awesome fantasy. Um, it deals with some pretty heavy topics and I loved some of the characters. So I want to give it another shot to see what I missed. Another one I want to reread is the Black Jewel Trilogy by Anne Bishop. The first book is called The Daughter of the Blood. And I read this um, a couple years ago, written to me by one of my friends, um, Tia. And this is a, if you really like really dark, gritty um, fantasies, this is definitely one for you. It is more of a epic fantasy almost because it is often set in a world that is not our own, but there are hints of, I wouldn't say modern day so much as like, like Victorian Renaissance time day, um, where it does have hints of that, but it is, there are a host of trigger warnings for that. Rape, slavery, torture, assault, cannibalism, mental illness, like, it's, it's, when I say dark, it is very dark, but it is so well done and it takes kind of a look, it's kind of an interesting, I just started watching The Handmaid's Tale and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that in a way, the world they're in where a lot of things are controlled by people who have a lot of money and are men. Um, and so, but the premise is basically that the, some of these characters, they get a jewel, um, a shade of a jewel, based on how powerful they are. So the darker the jewel, the more powerful the person is. Um, and so that's kind of where the name comes from. And that's kind of an interesting premise, but it's awesome. But like I said, host of trigger warnings. So be wary if any of that triggers you or if that's kind of hard for you to deal with. Just be aware that it, I mean, and it's very upfront in the first book. Another one is called The Prince of Dreams by Kurt Benjamin. This is also the second in the series. I've actually have started rereading the series, but I've kind of got sidetracked. The first one is called The Prince of Shadows. It's called The Prince of Shadows and it's the Seven Brothers series. This is, I really loved this book when I read it back in high school because it is definitely an, a different kind of fantasy where a lot of fantasy is more Euro-centric. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like face more, based more on like European culture and colonialism and stuff like that. Well, this is set in kind of like an ancient China and like their belief systems and like magic like that. And it's very interesting and very awesome. And there are some kind of darker moments here too, because the main character starts out as a slave and he has to kind of make his way up in the world to get off the island that he lives on. Um, but it's really awesome. Uh, another one, I actually read this one, well I kind of read it. I don't know if you can count anything I read in college as completed, but I did read parts of it in college called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I, the little, ooh, well the cult, mm -mm, the, 
I don't remember much about this besides that I read it in my English class. The parts I did read I absolutely loved. The part I bit the big part I remember is how like how like the truth isn't always the truth because it depends on how you see it or it's really hard to explain but it definitely gets you thinking and it has really interesting moments that kind of just keep you questioning what's really happening and I just wrote what I remember I really liked it and I've had some people re recently who have recommended it again and I was like I should kind of reread that I should give it another shot and well um the last book at least on my top five that I want to read I actually read way back in I think it was community college I don't think it was high school I think it was community college no maybe it was high school no I'm not sure but it's called um a Lesson Before Dying by Ernest Gaines and the very short synopsis for this is it's based around this black guy who gets falsely accused for this crime just because he was in the vicinity and he gets put on trial and it's about him dealing with this and what it's kind of like and it's set probably right after the Civil War. It's before segregation happened. Um, I'm really bad at history so um, I hope I don't offend anyone with how bad I am at saying about kind of what it happened, but, um, definitely before segre segregation happened, um, and it's just, I remember it having a huge impact, and I thought it would be kind of interesting to look at it, given, considering our current social climate and what's been going on, and seeing how, if it has new meaning, or just deeper meaning, or if anything changes and it's been a really long time since I've read it and I thought it might be interesting to go back to it. Well those are my top five rereads. I don't have a lot of rereads so I keep, I mean that's why I keep most of my books is I do eventually plan on going back to read them because I did enjoy them that much. Um, so almost anything on these shelves I could consider a reread but those I felt were the five I felt like really needed mentioning um, and until the next video, ta-ta for now!